If you enjoy our original content, please consider becoming a supporter on Anchor so that we can continue to bring you laughs every week. The following program may contain immature situations, themes, and is intended for an adult audience. The opinions expressed here do not necessarily reflect the views of everyone else working on the show. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, guys, welcome to the Danny McDermott Show. We're so glad you're back uh, to watching us today. We All right. We got a great show tonight. We have two wonderful guests that you are going to love. Okay, I'm back. You hear me? All right. I do. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. It's all right. We're pretty deep into this week's show before we have a little bit of a technological glitch. <laughs> Am I back? Yes, your screen is frozen, but your voice is back. My voice, my screen is for. Oh God, that's okay. All right, all right. Um, oh, that's why because I'm on I'm on Wi-Fi. All right. <laughs> I thought I was I thought I was connected. This is you know this is the problem with the you know I I bought wires and I tried to get all this done right and it's anyway. Um, am I moving at all or no? You are slight pixelation, but that's okay, Danny. Oh, that, you were no, born tough. to be slightly pixelated. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Danny McDermott Show, guys. Uh, I've done everything I can. I, I I don't know what's wrong, but hopefully we can get through this show without this insanity. You can hear me, right, Kevin? I can. Okay, good. I'm and I can see you. Okay, good. All right, so uh, it's Global Running Day, not to be confused with On the Lamb Day. You're not actually running from people. Uh, it's all about exercise. Uh, you know, I feel like it would be more popular if it referred to running water, you know, showers, cleaning food, indoor toilets, not carrying buckets from a well. You see, okay, here's my ranking, Kevin. Uh, running water is first, because there's no effort in that. Uh, second is uh, long distance running, because I have supernatural endurance, ladies. Um, and third, uh, sprinting because it feels like I'm suffocating with a heart attack. Uh, oh, right. it's also, it's also national Bubba day. Uh, how do we celebrate Bubba? I mean, really, why would we celebrate a Bubba? I, have you seen the teeth for sale at gas stations? <laughs> I have. I'm not convinced Bubba has earned a day. Uh, it's also national gun violence awareness day. This is not how we celebrate Bubba, because this this is actually how we anger Bubba. I'm not convinced. I I, I don't think you can take your guns from us. That's my best Bubba, Bubba impression. It's terrible. It's awful. No, it involves uh, the teeth, Danny. That's, that's half the you, 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 you going to do this? All right. Anyway, <laughs> National Rotisserie Chicken Day, which, you know, Bubba would still be angry, but because it's delicious, he feels more secure with gravy, mashed potatoes, and corn. You know, Bub Bubba does Bubba likes that stuff. Not beer, though, because Bubba can be bit, a bit of a dick on alcohol. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's also Yell Fudge at the Cobras in North America Day. Is this real? Yes. Yes, it this is. This is real. Wow. Yes, it is. Yell Fudge at the Cobras. I That sounds dangerous, number one. <laughs> Uh, the Cobras in North America call it You Won't Believe These Jackasses Day. <laughs> uh, it's also National Rocky Road Day. 
Uh, we keep going back to Bubba, but Bubba would, you know, with, because of that, he's now mildly irked and acknowledges that you're some, uh, that some extra marshmallow and cookie crumbles uh, help with atonement. Um, and finally, good. you know what? Finally, and this is the perfect one with all the glitches we're having. Net, uh, leave the office early day. <laughs> Leave the office early day. This should be every week. Hell, every day. Even when people are working from home, you know, just leave early. In fact, I'm leaving right now. Great show, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. We have guests. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. So our first guest I'm very happy to have here today. And this is our only our second guest that's actually in the studio with me. Very nice. She is an Instagram model and actress. Um, she plans events for Hollywood A-listers, and she's in tons of music videos. Please welcome Kayla Ray. <laughs> Holy cow. Do you believe I'm sitting next to this beautiful woman? Look at this. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So this is my sidekick, Kevin. The, Hello, Kevin. Oh, Keller, nice to meet you. For some reason, <laughs> I'm uh, still in miniature, but that's okay. So how did you get into Now, you, you became, you're an Instagram star. How many how many followers do you have? 35,000. 35,000. Oops, <laughs> 35,000. Now, how did you, how did you, when did you start modeling? I started modeling when I was 13 years old. 13 years old, okay. Yes. And how, what, what did you do? What were you modeling? back then i actually started out in pageants mm. um my first pageant was in salt lake city utah uh it was a little local pageant and that's how i bloomed i started in the salt lake and then i became or i started in miss utah usa when okay I was 14 and then i did that till i was 16. so three years wow and you told me when you're young your family kind of made you feel awkward because you're beautiful. Yes. And I was very tall. I was extremely tall. I was five, two when I was seven years old. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah. That is tall. It's taller than Kevin is now. That's okay. <laughs> yes. So, um, so you were like the tallest kid in the class, right? Up till 10th grade. Yes. And what was that like? That must've been like, it was very awkward. It was a huge insecurity of mine. Yeah. And your family was, they made fun of your hair. Your uncle yeah. did. Yeah. My lips, my hair, my eyelashes. I have very long eyelashes. I actually cut them off in sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> did you really? Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I have long eyelashes too. See? Oh, they're very pretty. Trim them during the break. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now, one of the things I want to talk about with, with both of you ladies, uh, Natasha's coming on later, um, how, it, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy how difficult it is for women who are beautiful to just even go out in public uh, because guys just swarm you. Yes, you have to be aware all the time because you never know when you're going to be approached by a creeper. It's got to be difficult, right? It's, it makes it hard to trust anybody, you know? Very hard. So, um, and you, you, now you do music videos. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. Um, I've been doing music videos for about two years, ever since I moved to LA. Um, I mainly do hip hop, um, rap videos. Can you tell us whose videos you've done? I've been in G Easy's, Blue Face, um, Rich the Kid. I've been in Quando Rondos. I've been in quite a few rap videos. So. And you get invited to these parties all the time. Yes. Uh, you were just at Drake's party? Drake's award party, yes. Tell us about that. I've never been to a Drake's award. All right. It seems like we're at our first glitch. So let me take a moment to make a public service announcement. And I just want to let you know that the maximum number of times that you can allow a bear to hit you is zero. <laughs> you, <Danny. laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so tell us about a Drake party. 
I guarantee none of our followers have ever been to a Drake party. So tell us about that. What, what is it like? Um, it's a lot of glam, a lot of fashion, a lot of people, a uh, bunch of different celebrities. Um, like what celebrities did, were there? Uh, I saw Justin Bieber. I saw Megan Fox, MGK. I actually met Drake's dad. Really? Yes. Um, <laughs> what, uh, yeah. what, 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 now you know some of these people. What is Justin Bieber like in person? What is he like? Can you tell me that? He's a spunky dude. He's very, um, he's a very artistic person. Whatever he does, he's, he's a super, he's just very artistic in everything he does. <laughs> when you talk to him, what do you guys talk about? Um, I'm dying to know what, what does Bieber do? So how, what is Bieber's small talk? <laughs> Bieber's small talk is he talks a lot about God. Really? Say that. Yeah. Really? Is he Catholic, you know, or is he... Christian? Christian. So he's, oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah. Did he become Christian or was he raised that way? He became Christian. He became Christian yeah. because of a woman or <laughs> because? Probably, yes. <laughs> Yeah. That's usually when most men find religion. Yeah, he got married to Haley, and then he became a Christian. Okay, yeah. okay. I didn't even know he was married. Did you know that, Kevin? I didn't know. There go your hopes, Kevin. And now that I have the knowledge, nothing has changed. <laughs> so what? Uh, who else? Who else did you say? Who Who else? Uh, uh, you, where you talk? Do you talk to? Is it celebrity wise? Um. I had just recently went to Jeff Franklin's birthday and had met quite a few stars from the Full Fuller House. Um, oh, I know some of those guys. I know uh, uh, David Lipper. Yes. Do you know David? Yes, he's a friend of mine. Really? Yes. Oh, he's, look at that. Yeah. Go. So, yeah. so you've been to his place? Yes. He's got the coolest place. He's got um, this uh, back house. He's got this backyard with a giant pool, and he's got a, a slide. A He's got a guest house, which, uh, what's her name? Gab Gabriella lives. Does she still live there? No, she moved. Did actually. she move? Yes. Who's in there she now? She moved. Um, nobody, <laughs> nobody is there right now, actually. Kevin, we can move in. Nice. How's the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully better than this. Um, so she's living here in John Lennon's house. Uh, uh, our friend Terry uh, is owns the house with his brother, and uh, you've been here what a year? About a year, nine months. Nine months. Yes. Okay. You a big John Lennon fan? Yes. You like the Beatles or just John Lennon? Uh, the Beatles. Okay. Do you like hip hop? Yes, I do. Do you have a favorite hip hop artist? Um. Yeah, I would say right now I still like G Easy. That's more rap. Um, she likes my rap. I did a rap the other day. Yeah. It was awesome. He's the best. I'm He's the best. Not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. So now you do music videos. You also, also host, she's not allowed to talk about it, but she hosts very big celebrities, parties I, and events. What is I hosting? I want to point out to you, Danny, that we expect you to be a good rapper because your name is Danny MC Dermot. <laughs> Perfect, Kevin. Perfect. Thank you. She's got the people down at Starbucks calling me Danny Boy now. <laughs> she, we, we walked in and they're like, Danny Boy. I walked Did they say that the Venti we, Venti is calling? <laughs> we, we were down there today. We were having coffee. Or we got the coffee. I put the straw in and then I walked out without the coffee. <laughs> what, did you put, what did you put the straw in, Danny? I put the straw in the coffee. It was like iced coffee. And then I just walked out. I did. I, I come back in. They're like, Danny boy. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, every she's like famous at that cat at the Starbucks down there. So she goes, Danny boy. And now they all call me Danny boy. So they, they love her down there. So, <laughs> but she, uh, she's got me doing these, uh, 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 walks now, uh, to get me because I'm fat because of COVID. And so we're doing, we're doing these, these, what are those flights of stairs called again? Uh, the Adina stairs. They're the Adina stairs. And how many, do we know how many flights? 
They're like they're like eight to ten flights yeah. straight down outside. They're outdoor stairs. And so we're going down the stairs, and this old woman is coming up the stairs and going back down the stairs. She lapped us like twice as we were going yeah. down once. Danny's gonna have to set up camps halfway up the stairs, like the people climbing Everest. <laughs> get used to the altitude <laughs> to ease the exercise. Dude, I come up once and I'm like, Ugh, uh, she, does uh. it 20 times. she does it 20 times. She told me 20 to there, there they are right there. That those are the stairs. Nice. Is that where you meet most of the creepers? Cause it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> it, she showed me these stairs and as we're walking down this woman, she did, she, this old woman lacked us twice. And it's just like, she goes, I do it 20 times. Did like, the original resident of that home invent the elevator? Look at that. That's looking down. Now, I don't know if you can see just how far they go, but it's basically up and down a mountain is, it, is basically what it is. It's insane. I was once on a, in a mountain in Colorado, and when you looked up, it looked like, okay, I could do that. And when you get to that height, you're like a third of the way up. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I already committed to this. This sucks. <laughs> well, you can't quit halfway up the mountain. No, you know, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> I would actually say that you should stand at the top of the stairs. See, in the old days, you could have had a Polaroid camera and sold people evidence that they actually made it. But <laughs> with the iPhone, that opportunity is gone. <laughs> All right. So I want to uh, I want to do a segment. Uh... I like it. It's called Frozen Danny. It's sort of <laughs> like a yogurt shop. It comes with toppings. <laughs> Thank God you're my sidekick, Kevin. <laughs> I refuse to be funny after 15 more minutes. I'm a union <laughs> comic, Danny. <laughs> Let's roll it. Failed movie titles. Now, a lot of people know uh, movies as they are today. They know the titles, the famous movies, but they don't realize how many titles they went through uh, before they found the real title, how many failed titles. And we're going to go through a few of them today. Number one, Saturday Night Fever. Now, Saturday Night Fever is a very famous movie, but you, what people don't realize is the original title was a big failure. Douchebags and Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of his lines is, is, is like, my hair, why do you got to hit my hair? I spent a lot of time on his hair. He <laughs> hits my hair. <laughs> All right, next one. Brokeback Mountain. Now, that's a great title. That's a great title. A lot of people, you know, it's a famous, famous movie. It won awards. I don't think it would have won awards if it was named this. Romeo and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. First of all, there's no balcony. <laughs> no. There's horses in a mountain. It just doesn't even make sense, Kevin. And those names never really intersected on a realistic timeline where people were named both Romeo and Steve. As cowboys, yeah. Yeah, Romeo cowboy. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not going to work. Next one. Four months, three weeks, and two days. Popular movie. I've never heard of it. But Kevin says it's popular. It is. <laughs> and, and, and it, you know, it's it, it, what's amazing about this is that just even a tweak could could really mess up a movie. Like if it was named this. Seven months, eight weeks, and eleven days. It's sure. just, it just, it just has. It doesn't. I, I don't feel connected to it anymore. I suspect somebody purchased the calendar and realized, hey, this name is all fucked up. <laughs> uh, next one. A Star is Born. That movie was redone three times and it was a success every single time. But it wouldn't have been a success if they had named it the original title they were thinking of, which is Don't Use Heroin. I don't know. That's a compelling story there. <laughs> yeah, but that's more like a public service announcement. It's not really a movie title. <laughs> well, it's the long version of the story. <laughs> Next one. St. Elmo's Fire, great movie with my friend Judd Nelson. Yes, I can say he's my, well, he's my semi-friend. He did my reading 
and I text him and he occasionally answers me back. Uh, that's a great name, right? And it was a great song, but it wouldn't have been a, as big of a success as it was if it was named this. The Breakfast Club later in the day with less likable people. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what it was though, right? No, it's, it's that's just an accurate description of the movie. These guys, it's like after they graduated and became party animals and jerks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And finally, the last one, Die Hard. One of my favorite movies of all time, right? Great movie. Yeah. It's a great movie. Beautiful title. I, you know, it's it's just it just draws you in. You know what I mean? But I don't think it would have been successful if it was called this. Definitely not a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big, that's a big hot button issue. Whether or not you think it's a Christmas movie, it is. It is a Christmas movie, but you know, you know, it is. is it I say it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> is it? I think so. I don't think it is. Really? I'll Are tell you. Are you a real man, Kevin? It's an action movie, <laughs> and it is during Christmas. But a Christmas movie is sort of about that theme of Christmas and what Christmas means. And it's it's not. It's an action movie. Yes, but it, it is about a man trying to, you know, stop terrorists on Christmas. Yeah, but then that that that's like, you know, going to McDonald's for breakfast is a Christmas movie, too, because it happens on December 25th. Like to me, no, it's not a Christmas movie. It's a wow. movie set during Christmas. That's. You know what I think, Kevin? I think when you were married, uh, she 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 made you think that way because mo I, no other man that I know if said I that was inclined movie. to let a woman decide how I think, I might still be married to her. <laughs> no, but while you were married, you didn't. <laughs> no, I did. That's one thing about me. From the minute you meet me, you get the full Kevin. <laughs> Nobody ever is getting misled about who I am, what I'm about, what I like, what I don't like. All right. While she now, now while we've got our first guest here, oh darn it, are you? Am I still there? You are. Okay, good. While don't while we've got yourself first, like this, Danny, it's your show. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> while we have Kayla Ray here, I want to bring in who I feel could be a big sister to her and a, and a mentor, and a and she's in a wonderful human being. I love her so much. Uh, she starred. She starred in uh, feature films, Playing with Dolls, Paranoid Activity Two, Death of Evil, Notes from the New World, and was a finalist in the Mrs. World Pageant. Please welcome Natasha Blasik. Yeah. Hi, hi everybody. How are thank you? you? Thank, thank, thank you. Well, I'm better now. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> I miss How you. Nice. I miss you too. Good to see it's you. So good to see you. Congrats on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you, you, were, you were on my first podcast, I think, years ago. I saw you on Facebook and I liked your posts. I like who you seem to be. And do you remember? Yes, you came to my house. It was so much fun. Yeah. It was such a great time just talking. It was really a wonderful time. Of yeah, it was great. It was great. And and uh, I met that's where I met Martin, your husband. Yes. Mm -hmm. He lives yep. here too. <laughs> <laughs> He's my husband after all. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. What do you what what do you say? Die hard Christmas movie or no Christmas movie? Honestly, I don't even remember what is it about. What? I mean, there that's my problem. I can watch the same movie a thousand times. It's like every time it's like a new new movie to me. So I guess this was for during the Christmas time, but I don't remember. I don't know. It's terrible. I'm so. so glad I wasn't drinking this when you said it because I would have spit all over my computer. Okay. That's a vote for not a Christmas movie. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what Christmas movie to me? I mean, Hallmark. I mean, I think Hallmark is like this, like not yes. that good of the movie, like yes. very sweet kind of to the point of yes. sickening. I mean, like that's it's not about materialism. It's about your loved ones. That bullshit message. Yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Where's Martin? Where's Martin? I want to ask him. He's right here. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> Martin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're not gonna show up. Hello. 
<laughs> Martin is a hand. <laughs> you may have seen him in the Adams family. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> High praise. Uh, thumb up or down? Christmas movie, thumb up. Not a Christmas movie, thumb down. Which one? Chris, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Is it thumbs up? It's yes. It's not a Christmas movie. Yes. Is it thumbs down? He agrees with go. me. Christmas movie. Oh, man. I'm no, it's not Hallmark. Nah. Too sweet. <laughs> See? No, but he I agrees with me. <laughs> All right, so so it's two against two. You want to be the tiebreaker? Sure. All right, what do you think? I have to say no. 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 There you go. Okay, we need more voters. <laughs> <laughs> so is everybody saying? <laughs> All right, Susanna. <laughs> She's gonna say no. Christmas movie or not? So according to his roast, when they roasted Bruce Willis on Comedy Central, he actually got on stage and said, it is not a Christmas movie. Oh, yeah. there you go. Oh, so, man. You well, you know, like, he's just a dumb actor. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wrote those words. He he's doesn't a really hot actor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So let's talk. Let's talk about um, where are you from originally, and, and and tell our our viewers where you're from and how you. Uh, just let's start with that. Well, I'm originally from Odessa, Ukraine. My first language is Russian, so a lot of people now ask me if I'm Russian. No, I'm not Russian. I'm Ukrainian, and I flew here on airplane. That's how I got here. <laughs> and you have a sister that came here too. Yes, she actually moved to U.S. a year ago, and our parents just came here uh, like a week and a half ago to visit us. So my mom is going to stay here for five months, and dad is going to stay for three months. So it's like really amazing time right now. It's like Very the first time that we all on this side of the world, like the whole family. That's oh, amazing. wow. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm happy. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> Do well, you you're one of the sweetest people I've ever met, so I'm I'm very happy for you. You deserve oh, it. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Danny. Thank no, you. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. And now you got now how how many Instagram followers do you have now too? You have a, a lot too, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I think I think so. I mean, I uh, twenty six no. point two no. almost no. point three. No, it's twenty seven. I looked at it. Twenty seven. Okay. Yeah. Twenty seven. Yes, I liked it. Another thousand times. For another <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> now, how did you do that? How did you get? I mean, it, it, obviously, it's because you're beautiful. But I mean, did, did you work at? Did you work at it or what? I mean, did you work to get your Instagram following up like that? I mean, I do, but you know, it's like it feels weird. More I work on it, it's like sometimes when you work so hard, it's actually the the result is opposite. So sometimes you just put it something and you're just like, this thing people like, but sometimes you put it on, you edit it all. And it's just like, and nobody likes it. It's like, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's both. I think it's like, you definitely need to work on it because I mean, I also have a show uh, with my friend kittens on the couch. So it's like an influencer show. So obviously, you know, and this extent, we put it like on a schedule, we uh, reply to every comment. So that's work. Definitely. <laughs> Now, how did you, um, we were talking about this earlier. I want to get into more about your life, but one of the things that you have to deal with this too, as a beautiful woman, how do you deal with men coming up to you everywhere? Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> oh, I can't believe what a hard life I have. <laughs> See, he carries a can of mace like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Is that... I mean, I think it's like a, I mean, it's a different people obviously come. And I think like when I was, before I was married, it's like the type of guy would come to me would be kind of more aggressive, like a jerk type. And I like, and that's what I was thinking. Wow. Like to actually sometimes to, to meet different kind of person, maybe you have to approach the guy. So that's how I, I learned. And, but it's like, I think also it's a good icebreaker, you know, different kind of people come to you and I, I take it as a blessing. I mean, on the bad side, there are like really weird people come to me and I'm very sensitive to energies. So that's kind of tough for me to kind of, um, you know, deal with that. But, but I mean, it's more pluses and minuses. So I'm not going to say like, oh, I have such a tough life. No, I think it's, you know, I mean, 
I mean, I, I feel like everything we've got is a blessing, so I'll take it. Come on over, people. I'm friendly. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. That's a good way to look at it. So, so what you're saying is she needs to get married. Is what you're saying. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't even sure that I'm a married type. Like, I didn't know that I'm a married type. I was like, oh, my gosh. My old dreams were like, okay, when I'll meet a guy, I'll go and meet a guy. And then I was like thinking like, you know, like you make these fairy tales, but I never had a fairy tale. What happens when you actually have a guy? So for me, it was definitely a process. Like, what is it like having a guy in your life? So, but now I find it, it's, uh, it's actually having your best friend with you. I find it's amazing. So, but you know, I mean, no rush to get married. Enjoy. I mean, I think am I cutting out or is she cutting out? I don't know. You're not <laughs> cutting out, Natasha. Okay. You cut out for a second there. Okay, so good. What would you say is the key to domestic happiness? What makes a couple happy? Um, uh, food. <laughs> Somebody has to cook. I agree. Enough, no, enough food. No, I'm not actually a big cook. Actually, Martin is a uh, is a cook. But yeah, what keeps us it. happy, you know, when my sugar goes up and down, he's like, you need to eat. So he brings me some food. So I think that keeps <laughs> our happy life being happy like i'm not so moody when i eat so but i mean yeah. on a serious note it's like just the communication i think like talk about whatever it is just talk about it all right so you started out modeling yeah right okay yes and uh i mean i loved it i started modeling when i was a kid um like i think back in ukraine i modeled a lot then i started doing uh, beauty pageants so I did a bunch of beauty pageants. Um, I um, What else did I do? Then I moved here. So I started doing uh, modeling here in LA. Then I started doing acting in LA. Then I started playing music in LA. So I tried it all. So I've kind of, but I enjoy modeling so much. There is something in me, even I have a picture that I'm like, I don't know, four. And I'm already having like some kind of, I'm holding a cup and I'm wearing my mom's Hat or something, and I'm already modeling, so there's something in me that I see camera, I just like cannot help myself. I just like, I just love it so, it's just so much. There's so like, I'm like, and then people tell me, like, act natural. It's like, what does it mean? I'm a natural model. <laughs> that's <laughs> natural. That's me too. Me too. I'm a natural know, model. That's yeah. why we connect so much. <laughs> two natural models. <laughs> Uh, so, so, but now you got into, uh, you got into some, uh, film work. Yes. How did that happen? How did that happen? Well, um, actually when I, I came here and Martin was thinking, what should I do? He started going by the list. You know, I already had a, uh, back at home, I got a master degree in, uh, international economy. So, but I like, when I even was like, I finished it, I was like, that's, I don't think that's what I want to do. And then, so then he was thinking, so would you like to try acting? I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, I did theater back at home. I really loved it. So then I, uh, we got me on the set, and um, and the first time I was there, I just loved it so much. I mean, I loved the schedule of the, just waiting between scenes. I mean, it didn't like it was not a waste of time for me. I actually felt like I finally have a purpose in life. Like it was just incredible feeling. And um, and I start um, actually my first one of my first jobs. I had like really good job. I was like on the six episodes of a comedy uh, show on the, um, on a um, Spike TV. I think it's like, they don't even have it anymore now. But uh, I had so much fun. I would do like some kind of comedy sketches and uh, I had really fun relationship with directors. So we kind of would come up with materials, like almost like collaboration. It was just like my first job and I had so much fun. So after that, I was like, I want to take it seriously. So then I started taking classes and I took so many classes, I think in LA, all kinds of techniques kind of molding my own and trying to find out what I, you know, what do I like? And then it just, you know, went from there. I just, I feel like when I act, I'm so happy. It like, it makes sense to me. I feel like I understand humanity. Like, I mean, the job of an actor is to portray humanity. I, I mean, I'm just very grateful that I have a chance to do that when I have well, a chance to do that. From our previous interviews, you, you have such a beautiful soul. I mean, when we were talking about uh, children, I was interviewing you for that thing uh, where we were trying to bring clean water to children all over the world, and you just started crying. It was just, I mean, you've, you've got a beautiful soul. You've, you've always struck me as a, as a good person. That's why I'm, I've always 
been glad you're, you know, a friend, you know, so. Thank uh, you. Now you worked with Jamie Fox. You worked with Jamie Fox. Let's talk about that. Uh, well, th uh, first of all, thank you so much, Danny. I feel the same about you. You're a beautiful person and I'm, I'm so happy that you're doing so well. Uh, I love this show. Well, and, I'm, not getting, uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting paid for this. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get you, you'll get paid in smiles. <laughs> there you go. You just made it the whole show worth it. <laughs> but you know, speaking of uh, Jimmy Fox, I mean, it was incredible. There was like some, um, on one hand, it was as an actor, I got that validation that I think like we search sometimes, like at least I was searching, even though you need to be confident oh, in your craft. Kevin, without... you're supposed to throw in a joke here. It's your job, Kevin. It's your one Danny, job. Danny paid, his internet, <laughs> Danny paid his internet bill this, with smiles this month. No, this isn't my internet this time. Oh, no. <laughs> what is mine? Yeah, it's okay. Oh, no. Oh, my God. It's just too much Jamie feeling Fox. going through the camera. Yes, definitely, definitely. It's just too much. The, the camera's having people like, breathing. Yes. <laughs> it's too hot. It's too hot. I'm overheated. I'm overheated. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, your camera's creepy. No, um, <laughs> he's from Hottie Land, Joey Ando. I love it. It's my favorite land, <laughs> Hottie Land. Uh, thank you. No, like, I mean, I think like working with Jamie Foxx has actually gave me this confidence and actually also knowing somebody who's in such a, you know, he's an Oscar winner and, um, seeing how much he loves craft and we became friends after movie and just uh, working with him. He's actually really, really, he's a really tough director. He's like actually not a softie. He would be like saying some mean stuff on a set to actors. Like there was like a um, girl actress next to me. We were doing a scene and we had a scene like with, um, I think that scene we had uh, Jeremy Piven, Eva Longoria and Jamie Foxx was in the scene too. And she started messing up. And he just like, you're not going to say those lines anymore. Natasha's going to say your lines. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, like, it just happens. And I know, like, for me, it was like the dream, like, of my whole, like, acting career. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm acting with an uh, Oscar winner. And I knew how devastating it would be for her to lose basically a part right there. So, and I'm like, oh, freaking out. And he just like, okay, and let's improvise. I was like, oh. Like, if I'm going to mess up, he's going to kick me out, too. But he's just like, come on, you got it. And uh, and I had such a great time. And um, I mean, it was it was really great. And that she that her camera can't handle it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, it was just amazing just to. And, and then it was like he had so much faith in me. And even after he was saying, like, you know, like a lot of people can audition, but when it comes to actual performance, like in the moment, like you can deliver. And it's like, it's actually meant a lot to me. And also like my confidence in doing comedy because I think, oh my gosh, he's a, com he's a freaking comedy genius that he actually, um, he told me, oh, I send you auditions to everybody. Like, I was so, I love the audition so much. I was like, oh, that's nice to say. But then people started coming to me and saying like, oh, I've seen your audition. I've seen your audition. So he actually, so in a short sentence, it meant the world to me, just like working with somebody like him. And, and what I learned from him, like seeing how committed he is to whatever he does. And he's not afraid to try different things because, um, like we became friends. So I know like I kind of follow his career like very closely. So I know that he does everything. He's a movie star. He's a TV host. He's a, a game show host. He's a, a, oh, he's doing animation. I mean, he's just like, and he has an avocado farm and he has a sunglass company. I mean, it's like, he's- Wait a minute, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying you can get us free avocados? Because I love avocados. <laughs> I mean, I seriously wanted this avocado. He's like, oh, come on over. Yeah, yeah, I'll get you avocados. So I guess. Yeah. He can pay me avocados to be in his movie. <laughs> Don't say it. You'll regret later. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need cash and I'm going to suck. You no. cut out for a second, Kevin. I said, I'm going to need cash to be in your movie and I'm going to suck because I can't act. But I still want cash. Well, better take cash and run then. <laughs> In fact, we should do a movie all about avocados. That's so I know checks, no, cash. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, it's like a name, avocado for cash. 
<laughs> that sounds like that sounds like a hooker avocado story. Avocado <laughs> story, I like. It. See, I think avocado sounds like a street drug. Kevin, I think you could play. I, Kevin, I think you could play avocado. the best avocado. I really. Do. I was listen. I'm not thinking straight. I was up all night snorting avocado. <laughs> oh. Speaking of that, like actually, I was doing some drugs in that movie too. So I was like googling how to snore properly. I was like, <laughs> so I, was like <laughs> I told I told Jamie Fox later. I was like, he's like, what you've been googling? I was like, well, I'm a serious actor. I'm like, I was doing my research. Like, what do you think? Of course, I'm googling it. It's like, how to make it like look like. I know what I'm doing. That's how to snort like a real drug drug guy. Yes, yes, yes. It's not like a real that's my first time. How to snort yeah. like a real addict. I think the case. Actually, the isn't case that the best you have coming out? <laughs> I think actually most drugs other than cannabis result in you playing with your nose. Really? Yeah, even when you when you're taking pills, you tend to be little nose conscious. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's a good time. Yeah. I and I you know, I was young once. That's how I know that. <laughs> I love how she she grabbed her nose just like you did. Because she's a yeah. she's she's an actress, damn it, Danny. Method, method. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, you know, maybe I'm on something now. I don't know that. <laughs> awesome. Actually, I, I've I, done so much drugs on TV. I've done like I think I've done like all kinds of things on TV. So I researched it all. So then, like on some TV show on Hulu one, I did like a an injected guy with a what do you inject guy uh, people with a heroin. Heroin? heroin, yeah, yeah. Heroin, yeah. So, and I was researching that too. I was like, you know, how do you, you know, how do you put the vein? Like, okay, maybe I it's think, like it's too far. <laughs> but I'm <think>, really dedicated. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to inform heroin addicts how to do it. No, it's, no, it's, no, no. It sounds like you could use a TV role as a person in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> in rehab for avocados addiction. That's okay. <laughs> they sneak up on you. First, it was one yeah. avocado a day. Then it was two. No, it's then like, then no. I found myself behind the convenience store offering to perform bizarre acts on people for my avocado habit. <laughs> okay. Only avocado trees in the neighborhood were bare, <laughs> stripped bare. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this, the, you see, we go off the rails sometimes. It's okay. I Can could, we see your guitar? I, I could... Can we see your guitar? Oh, guitar. Where is it? Yes, oh, let I'm me see. Your... Look at that. It's right there. Nice. Ta da! It's... That is a one of a kind, right? I, it's, it's not. <laughs> not? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you found know, a butterfly guitar? Well, it's you a need... company called Daisy Rock, and they uh, they make instruments like um, looks like flowers and uh, butterflies. But they don't produce this anymore. They don't produce uh, butterflies anymore. So I guess now I'm unique. So kind of. You're but, always you know, unique. <laughs> But you know, my latest and the greatest job, actually, I did this job during the pandemic. I was on a Netflix show, uh, Country Comfort, playing my bass guitar. And uh, it was like, uh, for me, it was like, I mean, Martin is uh, was um, a music coach on the show. So it was total nepotism that I got the job, but, uh, but I was like, very stressed. <laughs> well, that's how Kevin got the job on this show, so it's fine. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I think Gary Marshall was saying that nepotism belongs in entertainment industry. So I'm totally supporting this notion. So thank you, Danny, for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, that's, that's very You know, I, I was friends with Penny Marshall a little bit uh, before the end there. Oh, I interviewed really? her. Yeah, I interviewed her. For the same thing I interviewed you. Oh wow! Right, to bring clean water to children all over the world. She told me the most amazing stories about directing a league of their own. Mm. It, you know, yeah, we were on the phone for two hours once. And That's um, amazing. yeah, well, you know how I, I, you know how I met her. How she, she said she became friends with my friend who was a fireman in New York City. They uh -huh. were best friends, and I said, "Hi," ah. I said, "How did you guys become best friends?" She goes. Well, you got to be friends with your firemen. I go, what are you talking about? She's like, they get there before anybody. They'll get there before the police. So you got to make friends with them. So that was her, that was one of her things. So it was pretty cool. I, I like, I mean, I love her work. And uh, when um, I went to to hear her and Gary, like in, in Santa Monica, they were giving like a, a lecture and I bought a book, uh, so I read her book and um, uh, Gary's book. And actually, I really wanted, because I'm such a huge fan of 
uh, Gary Marshall, I wanted him to sign my book. And I was like so scared. I was seriously like star starstruck. And I saw, I have my book and I was like, first time I come into him and I was like, I just kind of came, come in. I just feel my tears start coming, rolling on. I was just so intimidated. So I just back up. Then I was like, okay, second time. I was like, I'm backing up. Then it's like third time I'm on, he's like, come in, come in. You can come. It's not so scary. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I, th I thought you were going to say the third time you threw up on him. Well, no, but I know somebody who did throw up on me once. So that's a. No way. Wait, wait, tell me, we got to hear this story. Oh my gosh! And he's okay. I'm not gonna How did say someone throw up? I'm on not you. gonna say the name, but and she's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's <laughs> trying to access the memory. <laughs> no, it's like unfortunately, I wish. No, wait, wait. You gotta tell it over again because you you were frozen. No, the memory is still there. But okay. I actually uh, ended up to work with this guy, and the movie is coming out soon. And uh, yeah, so that's interesting. How did he throw up on you? We were at the. Um, I think standard like on the sunset okay and i mean i knew him so he just sitting and saying something and i just bought my new shoes and then he was so <laughs> drunk he just threw up in my shoes <laughs> <laughs> oh, my new shoes and the sad part that he couldn't even remember the next day because he was so freaking drunk so i couldn't even complain i mean to who he owes you <laughs> shoes though he owes you a new pair of shoes totally totally he owes <laughs> no you question shoes. I know two pairs. It's like a. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was once on a uh, a ride at the fairgrounds. Oh, that's me and Penny Marshall up in the corner. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, yeah. that's when I, I interviewed her in her bedroom, and she was just so cool. We were just sitting there. Well, it wasn't the interview. That was when we were just talking about the interview. Mm -hmm. And so we sat there and we discussed it, and she was so sweet. And um, it's so sad she's gone. But um, yeah, yeah. Back to throwing up. Um, I was. Uh, <laughs> That's quite a segue, Danny. I know, I know. I <laughs> I was on a ride, and apparently and, somebody puked on him. Yes, but he froze. <laughs> but we'll never so know. <laughs> now you know the red. Now you know kind of the story. Okay, I'm. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Okay. Yes. So um, it's one of those rides that spins, right? And, and he was my buddy. His name is Bill Day. I still remember it. And if he, if he sees it, he can sue me because I don't make any money on this show. But we're, we're, it's going around and I see him. He goes, I'm feeling sick. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. I'm praying for the, for the, to, the ride to stop. You know what I mean? And it, and it stops and just in time. And I'm like, thank God. I'm getting out. And he pukes right in the back of my leg. <laughs> oh, no. Aww, That's so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, 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 and I had shorts on. So it, it was not fun. Oh, oh yeah, so no. gross. Let's... So gross. <laughs> that's a tough. That's a, up. That's a tough spot to wash in the amusement park sink. Too. Yeah, but I mean, I, <laughs> but I think you you bonded forever now. <laughs> no, no, we're not friends anymore. No, oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't because of that. We just drifted apart after the puking incident. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that's I'm teasing. I'm teasing. So tell us about your band. My band, well, my band is the best band in the world uh, for me. My band is, it's actually something that, um, you know, like acting, I have so much expectations and I have some kind of like, I know my craft, like I have like, uh, I'm gonna go and get it. But with music, it's kind of happened so easy. I was playing piano when I was uh, a kid, but then Martin is a composer and songwriter and he just like um, was saying like, oh, I miss playing you know, playing music that, you know, just playing out like in clubs and stuff. And and then he wrote, um, he wrote all, all the songs for our band, like really easy on a bass. So it's like really easy uh, progressions on the bass. And I learned it basically in like, I think in 10 days, he booked the show and he, he wrote the songs and here's your bass. And he's like, he's like, well, you're an actor, you can learn the lines so you can learn to play bass. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so intense. Um, but I oh, was in all flames right. on the stage. I was like so nervous. But uh, I loved it. I really loved it. It was just so fun because like I just don't have any expectations. Like I know that I'm terrible. So there's, I have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to have so much fun doing this. And it's just we start doing more and more. And it became like 
I mean, absolutely love it. And um, the songs that he wrote is something that we're both passionate about. It's about environment and uh, UFOs <laughs> because I've seen a UFO. So it's like a really <laughs> kind of like a fun thing we do together. Tell, and uh, tell and me about tell me about like, the UFO. I'm very yeah, interested I'm in the UFO. The same thing. <laughs> we got to know about the UFO. Well, well, well. Now it's did, finally. I just want to know: Did the aliens look like Kevin? <laughs> no, and there was no anal probe. That rumor is a lie. <laughs> I will not. Uh, I will not deny or. <laughs> 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 but not, I enjoyed not, it. I like it. <laughs> Some don't knock it until you try it. There you go. <laughs> no. Um, I, I mean, now it's like it's such a it's kind of fun that uh, kind of been more and more on uh, mainstream media. We talk about, you know, UFOs. So it's, that's kind of fun. But um, when I saw it, I was with my dad back in Ukraine and um, the whatever I saw, the ship, the probe, I think it was a probe because it was a smaller thingy. It came really close. Like I could actually touch it if I would stretch my arm. What? Like, it that, that was that close. And uh we walked with my dad for the open space. Like it was a market in the daytime, but at night it was empty space. And I saw it looked like a star, just a fallen star. Something was very shiny and moving towards us very, very like fast and, you know, directly at us. And that's why we started looking at it. And then it just came closer. I saw it was like in the shape of a cigar, um, the cigar shape, like kind of, it's not big. So like uh, I don't know. So many jokes I want to say about Kevin right now. Keep no, going. those are they're Bill Clinton <laughs> jokes, Danny. They're Bill Clinton jokes now. <laughs> Come on, that was a joke. <laughs> no, that's too dated, Kevin. That's too dated. No, never too dated. <laughs> so let me ask you, Natasha. Do yes. you miss anything from your childhood? Is there anything from the Ukraine that you wish you could like indulge in right now? Whether it's a place, a food, or a cultural event. Well, you know, because I just spend time with my parents, I feel like I've got everything that I want here. I mean, it's not like things, it's people. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know. I just had like, I just seen them like two days ago and I had the best time. I felt like I was a child again. We were laughing. We were like, so, so, and we were here, you know, so it's not, not in environment actually at the end of the day it's just us being together that's what mattered to me so i mean obviously i probably would like to go back and just just even walk around sometimes i dream about just walking around the city you and, know, and just... introducing me and kevin to beautiful russian women ukrainian <laughs> sorry ukrainian <laughs> what, was, what was the biggest shock about moving to america yeah. We know she's sensitive with that now, Kevin. Yeah, I'm yes. not the one who said Russian, Danny. I she's... said Ukrainian, and I said back home. See, very simple. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got ADHD, Natasha. You know that. That's okay. Yes, so, Natasha, that. again, was there anything about America that surprised you? Anything about it that you found difficult to adjust to? Anything you found weird? Like, what was the experience like of arriving here? Yeah, I mean, a lot of things. Like, it's it's very little. It's very subtle things that I think um, it's um, once you start going through the process you and you start like seeing them, like how different it is. Like my sister is going through that now. And I see, like, and I remember, I was like, yeah, those, like, you know, like even the relationship between men and women, it's very, uh, the culture is very misogyni misogynist culture. So it's, um, in Russia, you know, I mean, it's in the Ukraine. Ukraine you... Yeah, it's it's more so. I mean, even though it's much more progressive than Russia, I would say, but still, it's um, you know, there feminism would sound like an insult or something. I was like, what's wrong when it's like women actually we have some rights to say what we think? There's nothing like bad about this, as far as you know, I see on this side. So stuff like that, like I've, men, I've been trying women. to convince Danny of that for years. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Kevin. Don't start making me a misogynist. Uh, what are you talking about? I have these two lovely ladies on the show today because I think they're amazing human beings. And I was the one that pointed out it's tough for them to deal with like creepers like you. <laughs> see, see, he's here mansplaining to us. 
Oh my god. Kevin, when did you become a feminist? Holy cow. Yeah, about, ten, about 10 minutes ago. I took a that pill. Was, that earlier. was the question. <laughs> it's kicking in now. So That was a, that was a question yeah. on 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 the uh, employ in, on the uh, employment thing I that you filled out to get on the show. What what you weren't a feminist feminist before? I lied through that whole thing, Danny. I told you I was funny. You don't realize those answers were all bullshit. <laughs> well, now I do. You're fired again, by the way. All right. <laughs> it's like me going to uh, vegan events. And uh, I mean, I, I went to a couple and I was like, so you're vegan? I was like, yes, yes. I was, like, I was thinking the whole day today. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I was vegan for a while and I got in this argument online with this uh, woman who's like, I, I look at, I wasn't like one of those vegans who's like, everybody has to be a vegan, but this one woman's like, uh, she's like, I hate hunters, you know? And I'm, I'm like, really, do you shop at the supermarket? She goes, well, yeah. I go, well then you're worse than any hunter because wow. you're, you're, you know what I mean? You're buying meat from the animal Holocaust kind of thing. Right. And then her friend got on who was a vegan. She goes, I've been a vegan for 20 years. You haven't even saved a whole cow yet. <laughs> I was like, I was like, really? You know, I'm trying to support veganism and you're insulting me because I haven't been a vegan long enough to say it. Right? Yeah. Unless, <laughs> unless you used to eat cow asshole and lips, you have not saved the whole cow either. Just part. <laughs> <laughs> Take Kevin, that's brilliant. Thank you. That is great. I'm using that on stage next week. <laughs> I have a whole vegan routine. All right. I do. Yeah, we have to use this material. <laughs> let, let's let, let me ask you this: Can a vegan still have a beef with someone? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was terrible. That was terrible. That was good. Are you a well, vegan? Uh, you're you're not a you vegan, know, though, right? Huh? You're not a vegan, though. No, but even though, like, I think, like, I admire the the idea behind it, but I just think, like, yeah, I'm just. I'm still not vegan. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I, we're not a vegan. We're, we're not a vegan show. It's fine. I, I actually, good. I think most vegetarians and vegans are bacon envious at the very <laughs> least. At the very least. Yeah. Well, Probably, it looks, yeah. It but looks you know like, what? I don't uh, eat, I don't eat piglets anymore. I don't eat pigs. So ah. it's all started from the petting zoo. Um, I went to the petting zoo and they gave me this little, uh, like there's a little piglets. And I was like, can I pick it up? And it's like, sh they said like, sure, pick it up. So I pick up this little uh, piglet and it's like, he's struggling. He's like really afraid of me. And I, I put like on, on my shoulder, I said petting. And I was like, and then it's like suddenly he just like kind of relaxed and trusted me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't eat any more piggies. So ever since then, I don't need piggies anymore. I was like, the piggy trusted me. Like, right. right. Love it. So, <laughs> no more piglets. Well, no. you know what you got to do? You got to go to a farm and pick up a cow. I know that I don't have no cow to eat too. No. Oh, then you'll be a chiropractic aficionado. <laughs> what? <laughs> you'll hurt your back if you attempt to pick up a cow. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you were making a play saying it. A chiropractic. Chiropractic. <laughs> no, I told you I wasn't going to be funny, but I didn't say I was going to make that type of shit joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin, this is a good show. You're fired. Um, anyway, you know, I could say stop. in a pinch, in a pinch, those pigs would eat each other. Just saying. <laughs> so wait, you're pinching pigs now, Kevin? I no, I think I think I think pigs do resort to cannibalism. Really? Do they? Yeah, yeah they do. I think they do. Yeah. Well, most animals do. Most animals, no, most animals are loyal to a point. Well, cats are not. Cats love you no matter what. But if you die, they're eating you. Hundred percent. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, unless you, I unless you have a dispenser timed to feed right. them, you become dinner. Yeah, I think cats are like food motivated. More than <laughs> no, cats, okay, cats give love too. They yeah, really do. Yeah. yeah. No, I love cats. I do love cute. cats. No, they're cute and cuddly. Yeah. But if you took the brain of a cat and put it in a human, you'd have a serial killer. That's what I said. That's okay, though. <laughs> yeah. Kevin likes it. <laughs> Listen, I still want to put the brain of a dolphin in a human. I still want to see what that happens. Would very, that would be very smart human, then. Yes. Right? No, I, I think smart it would have a. Of the humans. 
I think it would have a bulgy head and it would be awkward. <laughs> oh, you know what? I've been yes. watching Star Trek Voyager and it's nothing but like weird head shapes and like weird faces. <laughs> so I'm totally now for it. Like, you know, mix dolphin and a human. That's going to be a good one. Right? Yeah, Wouldn't like, it be cool? They've got yeah. a brain that's like so much bigger than ours, you know? It's, it's, but they don't have any uh, thumbs or hands or anything. So, they, you know, they didn't develop. They developed a different way than us. I'm predicting yeah. that they would have an extraordinarily difficult time buying pants. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see how much money they would save? They Well, it depends. If you got to get your clothes all custom made, that shit's not cheap. Well, so, or they can be nudists. They well, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd want to see the blowhole. But, uh... <laughs> Oh, I would love to see <laughs> that's, uh, Can you imagine that's, that? Like a human dolphin with a blowhole on his head? Yeah, it would never be able to leave the rest stop. All those truckers would be lined up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin, that's not where we were going. Then, then you, would be, you would be interviewing that species and say, so you're so beautiful. What is it like to go outside? Is everybody wants to see a blowhole? <laughs> <laughs> And I thought it was tough for you beautiful women. <laughs> yeah. Wait for the mix with a dolphin. <laughs> that, that, that blowhole cam is busy all day long. <laughs> you got to give him a blowhole oscopy. <laughs> <laughs> so now, um, Natasha, let me ask you, what is the big project that you're working on? What is it that people can visit to see you? How can people go about supporting your career? Well, thank you so much for asking me. Uh, the movie that I'm in, uh, the new movie coming out on uh, uh, September, on uh, June 29th, uh, it's going to be in 20 theaters in US and it's going to be on Hulu and lots of other streaming um, networks. So that's going to be kind of cool. And I'm playing antagonist in the movie. It's called Blood Pageant, and it has a Snoop Dogg. Um, wow! And, uh, and, and Baldwin. So it's a it's a fun movie. It's a you know it's a it's a fun movie. It's a horror. It's a it's scary. It's a you know it's lots of lots of blood. So if well, you like you, these kind of things, it's fun. You and, may have uh, to audition. You may have to audition for my movie coming up soon. We're going to be shooting in the fall, probably. Speak to Ooh. Jamie Foxx. He handles all our auditions. Yes, yes <laughs> yeah. definitely. He's handling my stuff. <laughs> Wait, so, now one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. You design your own fashion for the red carpets, right? Yes, yes, I do. I do. Can you I, tell us about that? Well, I love, I love clothes. And sometimes, like, I have this thing that I want to wear, but I don't find it in my closet. <laughs> or even, like, you know, like, design. And so I, you freeze because you're like, what am I going to wear? And I, I don't know. know. I was like, I totally don't have anything to wear. And you know, like, you know, when you actually do it on your body, you do know how to drape your body so it looks the best. And I always, when I was little, I would do clo uh, clothes for my dolls. I actually even did my clothes for my friends. Like, I mean, I'm not so good. I was like, I sew with my hands, so I don't know how to use a sewing machine. So all my designs that I do, it takes me kind of a long time because I do like sewing with my hands. But I do love it when I... I'm, a lot of people say, like, why wouldn't you be a designer? I mean, I work on inspiration. So I think to be a designer, you need to be inspired at least for a long time enough to create a collection. I'm, like, inspired that I'm not. So, But when I'm inspired, it's like I just can, can sit and s stitch my dress, and I'm so happy. I'm just, like, the happiest person ever. And then I, like, for me, it's kind of fun to go on a red carpet and see if they think, like, it fits or, like... I mean, and oh, I actually went to the Oscar party, and then I ended up in um, in um, uh, online some kind of like best dresses, Oscar dresses, and I wow. ended up with my dress that I made. I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Me, that is for awesome. Me, it was really exciting. It's like what? I stitched it with my hands. It's fun. <laughs> you know, if you make an outfit for your guitar, it'll be one of a kind. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, actually, maybe actually, I, inspiration. I, actually, I think you're gonna have to make an outfit for Kevin so that he can sell his body on Sunset Strip because he's fired. That's okay. <laughs> oh, just no, make sure it can accommodate a dorsal. Make sure it can accommodate a dorsal fin, and it will be just fine. <laughs> and a, and a blowhole. <laughs> you will look good. 
<laughs> All right. So where can, where can people find you? Where can they follow you? Um, on my Instagram at Natasha Blasek and uh, Twitter, um, Facebook, if you still use that. And uh, because we're on Facebook, so people all follow us here. And uh, what else is there? And my website. I, I have a website. Okay. Surprisingly. I don't know if people still have website. But I <laughs> right? Um, I what about you, Kayla? Where can people follow you? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Kayla Ray, right? TikTok. Oh, TikTok. Yes, TikTok. Yeah. TikTok. 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 Kevin and I are aficionados at TikTok. Uh, we are. We have at least 50 followers each. So we're... Uh, well, together, it's 100. <laughs> exactly. All right. So um, uh, I want you... Uh, there's a couple things. I want you guys to connect but we'll do that after the show. We have an after party if you guys want to hang out. And right now we've got a segment from uh, Anthony. So let's roll that. All right. What are some movies that bring you home? <laughs> Welcome. How you doing? What's up, buddy? You know, I think the proper uh, answer is Stuber. You ever see that movie? That's the right choice. That that would be the right title to bring you home. Anybody what is that, that? Stuber? Guy, fucking knew it was gonna like. <laughs> yeah, I, I never uh, heard of it. So Stuber is this? Uh, it's not my choice, by the way. I hear it's actually not bad. Uh, it's uh, I think Dave Batista and company. Uh, basically, Stu is an Uber driver. Okay. So that's the appropriate movie that would bring you home. There you go. Taxi driver. The, uh, another one. Taxi fucking driver. That's more my sensibilities anyway. Uh, jokes aside, dad jokes aside, how's everyone doing? Awesome. Killer. No, killer. no complaints. I just had my blowhole cleaned. You certainly <laughs> did. And so did Danny. I'm, I'm feeling it, good. It had a lot of shit in it. A lot of weird stuff. Uh, I got I to gotta quickly say, uh, Natasha, I actually worked on a Gary Marshall produced short film. It was a Jessica Biel uh, short film as well back in like 2005. So I was able to meet him briefly. Super cool cat. So there you go. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was awesome. I just ran crew and uh, they were just, I think Jessica Bill was trying to like up her production mm -hmm. company at the time. So she made a short oh, film. Everybody's having problems today. So what it's is? not just me, it's the world internet. Am I frozen? Not you according to second. Yeah. Not oh. according to my screen. Oh, really? No, yeah. that's oh, all you, bro. Back, back to you, Danny. It was probably okay. me. That's okay. That's day cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah, small it sounds like a really fun project. Yeah, yeah. So it's called a uh, hole in the paper sky. In fact, it was starring uh, Jason Clark, who went on to do like uh, Planet of the Apes. You know, like he's mm -hmm. a he's an Australian like lead actor. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen his face in a shit ton of films. Yeah, yeah. As I said, so home films, films that bring you home, besides Stuber, which fell on deaf ears. <laughs> understandably <laughs> uh let's just let's get into it i don't want to like oh i should tell you let's take that off real quick so i actually painted i'm painting the video store black i like uh, it oh, this is the only part that's gray everything else is going super black so yeah it's been hardcore here at monday <laughs> i'm colorblind it all, it all looks the same color to me how dare you I'm I'm colorblind. Colorblind. what can i do same same but different uh okay. all right movies bring you home et people Boom. Excuse me, Danny. Danny is frozen again. That's okay. So here's the deal. Uh, any movie I throw out, if you haven't seen it, no big deal. Check it out. They're fucking awesome. Uh, most people have seen E.T., and if you haven't, it's totally cool. Uh, this is actually probably my first horror experience. I think I saw it when I was five in the theater, front row. And so when Elliot discovers the alien in his backyard that had landed, landed from outer space, and they first meet, it's literally – a jump scare and I was five. So it kind of fueled my love for horror. Uh, but they shot it in the Valley. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley of LA and uh, they shot it in actually Tahunga. So that house still exists. It's on Del Rios Avenue. Check it out. In fact, if anybody's interested in doing like film location tours, put this on your tour. This shit's rad. You could find all this shit on, you know, the internet. Um, if I had the capital, I would buy this house in a second. But uh, yeah, so anytime I watch ET, it's such a valley-based film. It's it's always like fun to revisit, and it's just fucking good. So, moving forward, I thought you were going to tell us you really like Reese's Pieces. 
<laughs> you know, oddly enough, I think they reached out to uh, the like the Mars company, Mars Bars, and they're like, "Nah, we're not interested." And this is like when Steven Spielberg, you know, had you know, this is per- post Jaws, so wow. they're like, "Nah, we're not interested." Dude, Reese's was like, "Of course, dude, we love Spielberg." Boom, their shit eclipsed uh, Mars sales like forevermore. So there's just that. So when when Spielberg hits you up for a candy bar, you say, "Yeah, that's a." It's a life lesson. Right, right exactly. So after this movie that I talk about for not movie, my camera cues are always fucked. You guys know this. After this movie that I talk about, I want to like jump around and ask what movies bring you home, make you feel like, you know, you're kind of back as a kid and hometown, whatever the fuck. Part of my language. I, I it's okay. I'm kind of a sailor. Uh <laughs> without being a sailor. So Goonies was a huge deal for me. Uh, and I, I think I talked about this on another segment. It was a kid's segment, and I was actually very PG with my language, so it was, it was good. Uh, but uh, <laughs> most people have seen Goonies. If, if you haven't, it's totally rad. It's not the kind of movie you want to fold laundry to. You want to hang out and just enjoy it and just get immersed. It's an uh, awesome movie. It's yeah. Awesome yeah. Movie. yeah, and uh, that's Josh Brolin, who's who's gone on to, like, you know, Jesus criminy. <laughs> I never do it right. There it is. One of these days, you know, Kevin, you and I should have like camera cue. <laughs> yeah, it's just whatever. I'm, I'm like super right brained. I don't know. No. <laughs> okay, I point to the left. Did I point to the left or the right? <laughs> uh, so, has anybody seen the Goonies? I mean, I know like Danny has and yeah, Kevin. Yeah, I've not. It's you're no. not. No. Wow. What? The third act's a little messy. No. Jump what? in. What do you think? It's a great movie. I mean, the end. Period. By the way, <laughs> in, instead of saying the end, remember Time Crafters. Our guest Craig uh, Albrecht, uh, his movie Time Crafters is the Goonies meets Back to the Future. So make sure you check that out. It just came out. So I, I like to plug my friends' stuff. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And any movies that are made in like that kind of like that, uh, you know, uh, ingredients or vein or ke- chemistry vein, it's great. You know, if that's like kind of like the. Uh, Lifeblood is it, is it me? Sure that's good. It's not me. It makes you want to go on a treasure hunt. What do you mean? Is it you? Nothing. He's, he's talking about the internet. <laughs> uh, am I? Am I still? Am I good for everybody else? You're smooth. freezing for me too. I mean, I, am no, I good for you? I got fucking turbo here. No, goddamn. you're doing fine. You're smooth <laughs> like a Persian rug. You have not glitched <laughs> or anything else on my computer. You're doing fine. Anyway, basically, like these are. Uh, so let's check it out. So this movie came out in '85. It's Steven Spielberg film. Another Spielberg film. Uh, and, you know, a bunch of kids are being, uh, their parents are being foreclosed on. They call themselves the Goonies because they live in the goondocks of like Astoria, Oregon, uh, right off the, the bay. And uh, they find, they happen upon a treasure map. Long story short, they follow the tre- treasure map. They go underground. There's booby traps left and right. There's camaraderie left and right. There's curse words left and right. It's super fun. And uh, this is where I finally, I mean, next to Never Any Story, and I mentioned this before in the other segment, um, it's where film language and music language kind of came together for me. It was Cindy Lauper's "Good Enough," which is a song in the, in the movie. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's a scene where it's like a uh, it's a crane shot, so the camera's going up, following the kids going down this long. They're on their bikes going down this long driveway uh, off Douglas Avenue. I've been to the house like four times at this point, uh, and so the camera like just raises up, and you see all these power lines, and it's just like the coolest like immersion or intersection of like music and film. And so for me as a, at the time, eight year old, I was like, Holy fuck, this is awesome. Like this was like, not to bring it back to your heroin story, but this was heroin to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so if you haven't seen it, it's super rad and super fun. There's not a mean bone in its body uh, moving forward, but Kevin, uh, you know what? Since we were on back to the future, let's just bang this one out. All right. Fucking, this is badass. And, and I gotta say, uh, there you go. How Got weird is that? How weird is that that I just said his movie was Goonies meets Back to the Future, and you just happen to have those two movies right in a row on your segment? That's crazy. If it was anybody but me, it'd be weird as fuck. <laughs> there you Being go. that it's me, I've got to I've got to stream Time Crafters or theater review. I'll I'll check it out. Back when um, I was broke, dude. Back when I was broke in New York City, I you. I had nothing but a VCR and I didn't have cable. I didn't have everything, anything. I had that movie and I must've watched it hundreds of times because mm-hmm. I didn't have anything else. I'd come home and I had nothing else to watch. It I, could be worse because no, you, it was peaked, great. you peaked, you peaked with that movie. In fact, oh, my, 
it's funny you brought that up. My dad, <laughs> my dad and I were no notorious movie hoppers back in the day. Like I grew up in the eighties. I was a kid in the eighties, uh, clearly. And uh, so we saw, aside from the hopping aspect of it, my dad and I saw Goonies in the theater probably ten times and Back to the Future eleven times. Like that's how we kind of bonded. I mean, clearly there's something going on here around me, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So uh, if anybody hasn't seen this picture. Uh, it's super valley based. Uh, Goonies is not. I just wanted to make mention of it, but it just you know brings me home. I uh, love Back to the Future so much. I watched it uh, the day before yesterday again. Really? It's one of my movies. I watched it. I think I don't know, maybe fifty times. Like mm, so nice. Like, this is my movie to see when I'm just at home and I'm alone. I just love it. <laughs> oh, it's a perfect film. It's a perfect it film. It is. And uh, if and anybody has, please. And they filmed the almost the entire thing with Eric Stoltz first, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the movie three, three weeks of the film, yeah, which is yeah. a heavy production slate. But uh, and then they realized, nope, he's this is the wrong guy, and they cast Michael J. Fox. Well, par par partially because uh, Michael J. Fox was doing Family Ties at the time. And so he didn't have the time to do it when they wanted to do it originally. And so they, they wanted him, but then he did, he was doing the show and they, he couldn't do it. So they got Eric Stoltz and I met Eric. He's a freaking great guy, but yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons they, but then he became free and they, they were filming it and they realized that Eric wasn't, he just, he's a great actor, but he, he wasn't the comedic style that the tone could. was off yeah and there yeah. was something that they couldn't it just wasn't gelling and yeah. i gotta say it saved the fucking picture yep 100 percent. and and i love eric stoltz i think he's a phenomenal actor um but yeah and it's funny because like part way through the production he was also doing when they yeah. were doing night shoots he was doing uh family ties so yep. he was like killing himself to make this movie but you know he he made it work and i was gonna say for anybody who hasn't seen it in viewer land or whatever basically this kid has a older friend who's an inventor and he invents a time machine out of a delorean goes back in time runs into his mom and dad and his mom falls in love with him he's like wait 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 not cool i need to be born so his, the whole plot <laughs> is him trying to hook his mom up with his dad that haven't like hooked up to make him so it's a badass plot, and there's three of these bad boys, and may there only be these three. That's just my, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe in a hundred years, you know, you remake it. But right now, just re-release it if you want to. Well, that's, but, a, that's the thing with time movies. Like you can do two, maybe three, and then it just becomes too convoluted, and you you got to stop at two. I think it's funny because I have a series called Transfers, and they have like eighteen. Really, <laughs> it's like. Uh -huh. uh, that's well, how you. I've seen this one before. It's just repackaged. That's how you uh, wind up with Bill and Ted's excrement adventure. Oh, that's very <laughs> funny. If that was on the fly joke, brilliant. That uh, was. That's. Of course it. Of course it was. <laughs> uh, no, actually, there's like six or seven transfers. But who's counting? But clearly, I am. Moving forward, uh, Kevin. No, 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 forget me, please. God bless you. God bless you. You're always on the ball, <laughs> uh, Kevin. I want to. I want to break this up so it's not just like me doing oral reports. It's All right. What what movies do it for you? What movies bring you home or you know take you back? Both movies are set in 1977 in New York City. Saturday Night Fever, which they filmed in my neighborhood. I knew people like this. This was an option when I was a kid. This was something you could legitimately do, have your normal, regular life, and then come Friday night, you dress up, you do a lot of cocaine, you go out to a disco, and you shake your ass all night long with questionable friends. It's awesome. So and and you know it's amazing I didn't follow that path really. If you think about it, I'd uh, I'd look wonderful in a white suit, but it does it that whole vibe. It was a time in New York City too that was sort of a mix of of depraved and also innocent because there wasn't that whole safety thing, but then there was because of the next movie that takes me home, which is Summer of Sam. And that was just crazy. It was a crazy time. People were afraid. Blonde-haired women were dyeing their hair dark because they thought at first he was shooting blonde women. Uh, there was the Yankees, the whole 
the the big fire in the Bronx, the blackout. It, it to me, if I had to pick a year that really encapsulated New York City, it would be 1977, and I was like nine at the time. So it's and it they both ring true. That's the other thing that I I have to say is a theme is both of the movies are pretty pretty accurate to that era. There's always going to be a little bit of license when you're making a movie. Uh, but at no time when watching either of these movies am I like, that's just bullshit because it was all pretty, pretty rooted in reality, uh, including at the time Saturday Night Fever had the record for the most curse words in a movie. And everyone from Brooklyn was foul mouthed. Like, again, I was nine and people would come up to me like, I like to eat pussy. Do you like to eat pussy? I'd be like, dude, I'm fucking nine. Go away. Oh, wow. Uh, Bronx. Well, because because I lived in Brooklyn, I knew what they were talking about, but I wasn't ready for it. That's seventy seven. That's the year I was born. Spoiler alert. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, nineteen ninety four, Danny. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so, yeah, seventy seven. So man, if only I grew up in New York. I grew up in the other coast. That's but uh, I gotta, I gotta check out uh, Summer of Sam again. I, I feel like I've seen it, but it, it, it escapes me. So yeah, very, very true to the era. It really is. Killer, right on. Um, let's uh do one one quick one for me and then we'll move forward. Um Murphy's Romance. Anybody? So this oh. one was like my mom's favorite. When I was a kid, I was like, F this movie. why would I want watch this? I like Back to the Future and sh stupid shit. Not that Back to the Future is stupid, <laughs> but other stupid shit. And so uh I finally watched it with her. It's uh Sally Field and James Garner. And uh both phenomenal actors. So I'm watching it with my mom. I'm like, eh, whatever, whatever. And, you know, we're hanging out. And there's a scene where they all go to a theater and then they watch a scene. And it's Friday the 13th, part three. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. It actually shows a scene from Friday the 13th, part three. Wow. Where, like, somebody gets, like, super brutally murdered. And I'm like, wow, I'm eight. Because <laughs> my, my horror bug has started, right? So, excuse me. So I'm like, this is a fantastic. You like that, Danny? I'm drinking. I'm drinking truly, which is like the GoBots of White White Claw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're we're gonna get a sponsorship from them and just say, just say it'll keep your gut down, but you're gonna burp a lot. You're gonna burp a lot. So <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not using the mic version. It would have been like 3D audio dude, style. It was great, dude. That's the first burp on the show that was that audible. <laughs> well, I'm drinking truly. So, you know, it's funny because when I was drinking White Claw in the last episode, you kept saying like, oh, it's very gassy. I'm like, oh, I don't I don't see it. I think truly might have eclipsed White Claw in terms of air. <laughs> if nothing else, this is a, a head start toward getting Wendy Williams to sponsor us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, like, I can say I'm losing our guests. So anyway, moving forward. <laughs> uh, so I, I started watching Romance with my mom because it was like one of her favorites. And um, I got to say, it, it's grown on me. Like I've, uh, to this day, I've purchased production used uh, uh, notes, um, uh, call sheets. Like I've got all these things. And just because it's kind of like me capturing, because I'm a super movie cinephile, as you can see. But I, it's like me capturing like that fun time that I was hanging out with my mom. I mean, there's other fun times. My dad and I were more like the movie buddies. My mom and I have, have a couple movies, maybe. And Murphy's Romance is one of them. It's basically uh, Corey Haim's almost first film, by the way. Oh, wow. He plays Sally Field's son. And she, you know, she has a kind of a string of bad luck. She ends up in Arizona and she opens a, a ranch. Uh, she's like a horse boarder. And she runs into James Garner, who runs a pharmacy. And he's like the town's most eligible bachelor. And at this point, spoiler alert, well, I don't want to do it too much. He's a little older than she. Okay. And that's kind of like the the guessing game in the movie, like, how old are you? Um, so anyway, uh, long story short, it's a hell of a picture. Totally holds up. Check it out. Uh, by the way, uh, Murphy is James Garner in the film. It's not Sally Fields. So let's move forward. Anybody? Mm -hmm. What's uh, next? Is it me? Is it somebody else? Otherwise, I'll ask Natasha. What's up? So, oh, okay, I'll yeah. tell my movie, because then I heard the question, I was like, the first movie came to my mind, mm. and it's like, I will say, like, American movies, because, I mean, obviously, I had some movies that I, like, watched then as a kid, but Blood Sport, mm. I mean, it's like, that's what I'm, I mean, back in Ukraine, we were, like, watching lots of American action movies, 
And I absolutely actually loved that movie. And then years later, I worked with John claude Van Damme on a TV show, John claude Van Johnson. And I was like, I came to him, I was like, oh my gosh, I absolutely love Bloodsport. This is like a movie of my childhood. He's like, this is a terrible movie. Oh no. <laughs> I, saw you, I saw you on his show. Huh? I saw you on his show. Really? I think I messaged you when I saw you on the show, yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. You made my day, are you kidding me? Yes, 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 I remember that. Because, yeah, I mean, for me it was like such a big deal. I mean, he's like, seriously, I absolutely love the movie. And I watched it after that. Uh, after the show. I was like, is that that bad? It's like, so I watched it again to make sure that it's not so bad. I mean, I still like it. It's I think fun. it's a great movie. I really do. I loved it too. I and agree. Has, yes, and he has such a sweetness about him. He's just so sweet. Yeah. And I mean, in this show that we worked on, I mean, he is a he's a great actor. Actually, he surprised me what a great actor he is on the show. Yeah. Uh, but the character is kind of more, you know, like smarter and but what's beautiful about Bloodsport, his character is so open to the world and just so straightforward. Like it's just there's something so beautiful about it. And there's a lot of fights. <laughs> Killer. Yeah, blood, blood sports great. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. In fact, he's uh, pretty active on his Instagram. He goes live quite a bit. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. really fun. Um, I'm going to jump ahead because we actually have a special guest. Yes, uh, we this do. Is, this is actually my uh, last pick, and, and it's not in, in any means uh, in particular order. Uh, but because of time, I don't want to keep this uh, guest waiting. Uh, Halloween. Which was just flashed and oh, where'd it go? taken back. Here we go. Halloween for somebody who grew up in the valley and is a horror fan was, and who also made short film knockoffs of this <laughs> with a mask in front of a camera lens, like a camcorder, as I stalked my house or stalked my sister's bedroom lights. Okay, unknown, unbeknownst to her that I'm shooting this short film. Uh, it's one of the most atmospheric pictures ever. Halloween. Shot in uh, Old Town Pasadena, uh, aka Haddonfield, Illinois. Uh, so yeah, I just want to say, dude, Halloween's badass, and uh, I believe we have a guest. Is that we correct? We do from we the do. movie. We do. We have Michael Myers' sister, Judith Myers, Sandy Johnson. Woo! Hey, Sandy, thanks for coming. Hello, part of my language. How are hey. you? Hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> love your work. Love your You're work. Keeping love me your work. awake. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, huge fan. I got too many of these to count. Too many of these. But uh, it's it's one of the most atmos atmospheric pictures I've ever seen. And uh, it's a testament to Carpenter, clearly, and the director of photography, which uh, was it Kundi? It might have been. Uh, it's a beautiful yeah. picture. In fact, any uh, Carpenter movie, like The Fog, is just gorgeous. And um, when I think of a movie that brings me back home, it's absolutely horror-wise, which is one of the most perfect pictures of all time, in my opinion, is Halloween, hands down. So I appreciate you even being here for me to hear some random guy say, <laughs> I love it. What was that like being on the show? You were the... You were the first person to die, right? I was uh, just a minute or so into the film. I have a a little cameo, and then I'm dead. <laughs> so uh, the young Michael uh, takes me out. Yeah, it was a uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun working with John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, and uh, just uh, it was a creepy old house and just kind of scary shooting it upstairs, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Do you have a, is there a special memory that you have from the show? Your favorite? Um, hmm. Probably the scene on the couch with my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's uh, part of the uh, single take camera shot. If I recall from right, you know, nerding yes. out and watching special features over the many years, uh, and where like the crew was moving lights to potentially uh, get out of frame, or as the camera passed by the steady cam, as it yeah captures what it needs to right. capture. So 
It's a heck of an entrance. Uh, entrance. What was picture. it? What's it like being a part of history? I mean, that was a historic movie. I mean, that must. Did, did you realize how big it was going to be when you were shooting it? And and how did you feel once it, you realized how no. big it was? Yeah, I had no idea. I um, I actually had no idea till about three years ago when my agent found me because I was living a whole <laughs> different life in rural Texas. <laughs> so I I really was uh, rather shocked just three years ago that it had actually become an iconic film and that uh, people knew who, who I was and were actually looking for me for a long time. So yeah, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> and now it's like this, um, huge responsibility really to carry this role because it is an important role. And I feel like I need to do it justice and, and carry it with pride and, um, reach out to all the fans because a lot of them wondered where I was all those years. So it's been kind of fun touching base with all of them and getting to know them. So I imagine, um, I'm, I'm guessing, have you done some conventions since? I have. I, uh, that's why he actually contacted me because he, he wanted me to do conventions. Nice. So I've done about, who oh, maybe seven or eight now. And then last year I had seven more lined up. Of course they all canceled, but sure. I, I did end up doing the Mahoney drive in and a pop-up market in Houston, both of which were fun last year. So it wasn't a total nice. uh, fanless year, but nice. uh, this nice. year I have Chicago flashback coming up and for the love of horror in UK. So they're, they're coming in again, so I'm looking forward That's to that. That's good. That's exciting. Um, if I may, uh, if Mad Monster ever reach out, they're a great convention. Uh, yeah, so check them out. They, they have a convention in uh, Arizona and North Carolina. Uh, so just a heads up. Uh, usually PJ Souls does them. And you have a movie coming up. Yeah. Oh, I love PJ. She's awesome. I love it when we're next to each other. <laughs> we have a good time. She's yeah, yeah. a sweetheart. Okay, I will. My agent actually does all my bookings, but I do uh, send him suggestions now and then because there are so many cons and sure. he's busy and he has like a hundred clients. So he's a very busy man. So putting in a word here and there of something cool never hurts. Sure. So now you're back into acting again. You got a film coming out, Susanna said? I am. I started taking acting lessons online again a couple of years ago, and I was cast for a cameo in Volps, The Lust for Revenge, which is a Hungarian film. And I'm looking forward to seeing it come out. I saw the prologue before I was asked to, to do the cameo in the newer one, and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fabulous. And when I gave him my review, I had no idea that he was considering using me for anything. So it was a totally honest review. I, I thought it was just fabulous photography, a great, great story. I love animals. So uh, being mean to animal abusers, I have no problem with. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, I yeah, wrote the screenplay for that, right? I'm excited about that. I what? I wrote the screenplay for that, for Volps. Yes, I, that's what you said. That's so cool. I love it. I can't wait. It's very Yay. cool. You can't wait. I can't yeah, wait. I, know, I, can't, I can't wait to see it. It's a great story. It's a great story. The actors are great. The photography is great. Uh, yeah, I totally love it. So you did a wonderful job. Well, thank you. So where well, can people find you? Yeah, where can they find you, Sandy? They can find me on Facebook at The Real Sandy Johnson. They can find me on Instagram as Unicorn Sandy J. And they can find my website where they can get um, signed photos or send in things to be signed, posters and things. They can watch a lot of my interviews. And that is uh, unicornsandyj.com. Very nice. 
I appreciate you stopping by for this. This is a super treat. And uh, just thank you again. Uh, love your work. Uh, an iconic picture. Of course. And all of film history. So thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Danny. Well, I appreciate, appreciate the invite. Coming. You have a wonderful evening. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Bye. 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 What a dear heart. I feel like that a was great. jerk for being a foul mouthed guy. Anyway, <laughs> back to myself. But uh, no, uh, that's awesome. Very cool. Um, Camper, I want to know what you think. What's the movie that you, that takes you home? What's the one that you told them? The Notebook. Snap. Yes. Face. Lean. Lean. Do a little lean. Yeah. I, I used to have to do that. It was oh. awesome. Yes. I what do you think? It. It's so romantic. Um, I used to watch it with my mom and dad all the time growing up. So it's just one of those movies that brings me back. You know, I got to tell you, if I may, uh, I used to clown on this movie before I saw it. I'm like, eh, the notebook, eh, the notebook. Only because of the social media like chatter. And then I saw it. I'm like, damn, this movie's awesome. It's okay, great. it's fantastic, and I totally undersold it, mm -hmm. uh, and I had no idea how good it was. And oddly enough, uh, wh where is it? This movie, remember Murphy's Romance? Mm -hmm. James Garner is the old dude in the movie. He's in the nursing home in the film. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, he's a hell of an actor. Oh, so, yeah, he, was. he really was. Yeah, so uh, movie is fantastic. I can't, I can't agree with you more. I, I was a hater for lack of a better word, and I agree with you. It's totally rad. Yes, it's very romantic. Well done. That was the I first agree. movie my husband and I saw when we started dating, and we've been married sixteen years. Snap. Wow. So brought so you that's, by the notebook. That's how you hook a woman? You watch that <laughs> Thank you. No, yeah. if, if he had, if he had taken you to see Bloodsport, you'd still be married too. <laughs> oh, oh, well, snap. Probably. Probably. All right. So the next one, uh, real quick, uh, Mr. Boogity. Anybody? Anybody? This is really reaching far down to the level of, of mm, there we go. whatever. So Disney used to have this thing called uh, ABC's Wonderful World of Disney in the late 80s. And they would have like an hour feature or feature, if you will. And this was one of them. This was a super horror film. You could find it on YouTube. Totally streaming. It's fun. Uh, it stars uh, David Bostino's brother. Ah, nice. David Faustino in it? I know his brother's in it. Regardless, the movie's rad, or this feature is rad. Uh, these, uh, this family moves into a, a house, and it's super haunted by somebody who got killed 300 years ago. And this guy, bam, I got it right, is like the antagonist, <laughs> and he sucks. So if you're like a kid and you watch this shit, you're like, holy shit. If you're an adult, you're like, holy shit. This guy's got boils. Anyway, check it out. Moving forward. <laughs> yeah. It's on YouTube, Mr. Boogity. They got a sequel, Bride of Boogity. Moving forward. <laughs> Back to the Beach is dope as shit. Anybody? Yes. I'm I trying to remember. Frankie Valley. Is that Pee Wee Herman? Frank, Frankie Avalon. Frankie Avalon, oh. Yeah. I thought that was a WCW pay-per-view in 1991. <laughs> so uh, back in the day, Frankie and Annette, uh, Frankie Avalon, Annette Funicello, they were uh, they they made these series in the '60s. They made these series of beach uh, movies, you know, very PG wholesome beach movies. Sure. And then 20 years later, in late 1987, they made this punk rock uh, beach movie, Back to the Beach, and it's actually rad. So uh, if you're super into the '80s, if you're into like pop culture, at least from callbacks from that time and you know generations before. Back to the Beach is badass. The soundtrack is awesome. Pee Wee Herman's in it. Can't tell you uh, how badass it is enough. And uh, it was shot at all the beaches I grew up in. Um, nice. Yes. Uh, Danny. Is in that movie? Wow. Yeah, it was I, a cameo, cameo. I went to Coney Island today. Beach was, in Brooklyn. He, was he Pee Wee Herman back then? 100%. 1987? Yeah, of course. He was Pee Wee Herman even before that. Oh, 80, 85 yeah. was Pee Wee's Big Adventure. No, He's but wearing they, the suit and the out in the picture. I see it. No, but they yeah. didn't they and that Funicello and and didn't they Frankie weren't they doing movies in the fifties and stuff together? Maybe late. I think uh, I think just sixties. Sixties. Yeah. yeah, like beach blanket bingo. That's mm -hmm. the whole basic beach genre party. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was like a reunion kind of thing. And they were make more, but sadly she had health issues after that. She had uh, MS. 
So uh, nice. and she became wheelchair bound and they would have done like three or four of these. But I'll tell you right now, if you want to like, I hate to say even if you want to th- fold some laundry and, and watch this, it's fine. Because it's just like good ambiance energy. Back to the Beach, check it out. Great soundtrack, totally fun. Uh, the next one I'm just going to say real quick, Stepfather 2. They shot this down the street from my fucking house, and I was like, dude, this is rad. Because I saw the stepfather, okay? And the stepfather is basically about a guy who mur- he gets in good with the family, and then he murders him, but he gets a little weird. Then he moves forward to the next family, gets in good, murders him, blah, blah, blah. So uh, it sounds like every Lifetime movie that's out there. Oh, it's Tracy, Tracy Gold. Yeah, yeah. It sounds Who's like every best? stepfather. Oh, that's terrible. How uh, dare you. Listen, uh, dare you. in the lion universe, the lions will kill the children of the lioness they want to mate with. And uh, that's, that's, you know, it's not the kind of environment you'll hear the sentence, you're not my real dad. <laughs> I have that's said cute. that that's before. <laughs> so this one stars, uh, she's kind of a side character, but Caroline Williams, she's a uh, horror actress from like uh, Texas Chainsaw 2 and so on and so forth. Uh, for me, it takes me home. It's literally shot like two blocks from my house. In fact, we try to be extras in it. So it was cool to like watch it being shot. So, Susanna, what do you what takes you home? What drives you home? Mine's gonna be beaches again. You mean beaches? Beaches. <laughs> yes. It's a coming of age story of two little girls that meet at the beach. One's a a showgirl. Maya Bialik, and the other one is, she grows up to be Barbara Hershey. I don't know the little girl's name, but it's a great friendship and it just goes throughout their whole life. And so as a little girl, you're like, is my life going to be like that? So anyway, that was one that I watched a lot, a lot, a lot, because I'd go to the Georgia for the summers and my aunt didn't have cable. We just had VHS tapes. So is this or Alice Sweet Alice with Brooke Shields? Snap, that's a good callback. <laughs> yeah, that's so. good. The young yeah. Bette Midler, the young Bet Midler in that it was uh, Sheldon Sheldon's girlfriend on The Big Bang Theory. She's actually the new host Maya of Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah she she's the that. host of Jeopardy. What? Yes. That's yes, they actually awesome. today they told her they want her to be the permanent host. So wow. that is, that's what people are saying. We'll see wow. if she does it. I'm mm-hmm. I'm with it. I'm with it actually. Yeah. As a Blossom fan, I'm cool with my. I mean, it could be six, but it's not. I can't see six Which doing is Jeopardy. Jenna Von Oy is her name. I know. I can't yeah. see her doing Jeopardy. I, I'm literally Rain Man with these names. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Beaches is badass, but I've never seen it. So cool. That's a good choice. Oh, I'll check really it out. Good. But it's it's sealed, so I'll never watch it in uh, the old video <laughs> story. Or, there you go. Yeah. Um, does anybody have? I mean, Danny. Yes. Should, I, should we just let's get into it? Bro. Outside Providence, man. Great movie. Great choice. Yeah, that movie. That movie brings me back because you know I had the. F- I love it. Keep talking, bro. <laughs> no, it, it, it brought him all the way back to Keep where. Keep talking, homie. He didn't have internet. Time. Where, <laughs> where computers computers didn't exist and. Uh, Jenny, uh, start over the segment because you froze for a moment. I'm sorry. Okay. No. no, my dad. My dad was that type of tough dad, and and. The friends of the main character were like my friends, and you'd hang out at the parking lot and drink beer and smoke weed, and it, the whole lifestyle was exactly what I went through when, back when I was young. So, and it's just a hysterical movie. Um, some of the funniest one-liners I've ever heard in a friggin' movie. I, I keep telling my friends it's one of my favorite movies I've ever seen because it mixes Dumb and Dumber comedy with drama there's a scene alec baldwin's phenomenal he's so freaking funny but then there's one scene where he makes you cry and every time i watch it i I tear up so it's it's in in my opinion it's one of my favorite movies i've ever seen now i apologize you can say anthony no but do that scene with uh chinese food if you're down you're feeling yeah 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 yeah. absolutely he's sitting there he's in, in his underwear Al Bones in his underwear on the couch and his son comes out. He's getting ready to go to school. He goes, that girl you, you've been seeing, you're putting the wood to her. He goes, come on, dad. He goes, listen, making love is like Chinese dinner. It ain't over till you both get your cookies. Remember <laughs> I said that. 
The end. He just keeps eating ice cream. <laughs> yeah. No, he was a real dad for sure. For sure. It was, it was, yeah. I mean, Great. maybe a real Rhode Island dad, but yeah. I, I actually did the scene on stage where he talks about to his son, uh, finally, about how his mother killed, us, killed herself. And I did that scene. Well, we don't, we, thanks for the spoiler. She no, jumped no, on a cookie. That's not going to spoil out. anything. That's not going to spoil anything. You, you, you kind of give hints throughout the movie. You kind of know that's what happened. But the, the confrontation was just amazing. And that's the scene where I, I, t I, was, I was talking to Peter Fairley about it because they produced it. And I was lucky enough to have a 20 minute sit down with Peter Fairley at Columbia University. Awesome. And I told him, I, I told him, I said, uh, you know, I didn't really like Alec Baldwin until I saw this movie. And he goes, you know what? I think you're right. It's some of his best work that he's ever done. <laughs> well, because he's kind of Alec Baldwin all the time. And, and you know, teach their own. I, I kind of like it. You know, it's not like, you know, like Paul Rudd makes a movie. It's like, well, that's great. I want to hang out with my old friend, Paul Rudd, who I've never met, you know, but, uh, you know, Alec Baldwin's like that, but it was a departure in terms of acting when he made that movie for sure. Yes. Yes. So, so I don't want to hijack no. anybody else any further than I have. So I'll just try to bang this out. And I appreciate you all listening to this blithering idiot. Uh, the next movie is People Under the Stairs. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Wes Craven film, the guy who wrote and directed oh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Never. Dude, this check it out. Never heard of it. I it's don't scary. even re recall its existence. Yeah. Oh, it's rad. Uh, my friends and I used to draw comics on this, but we would like make it funny. Uh, basically, this uh, one family, it's a brother sister unit inside the house, but they're married, kind of. Uh, so it's they're incestuous. It's the one house that you like cross the street when you want, when you pass. <laughs> That's like the MO of the film. So basically, they own like a lot of the city. And there's a. Uh, couple. There's a black kid named Fool. It, I don't want to get into why he's called Fool, but it's like some tarot card reading thing. Uh, he and uh, 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 God bless. He and this other guy, name escapes me. Um, plot this like uh, heist. So they're gonna break into the house because there's gold coins. Okay. So they get in there, and once they get in there, the horrors are revealed at this house. Just like that cat. <laughs> Just like that cat. That was, no. that was timed wonderfully. Just like that cat, yeah. Perfect I'm talking a cat fight like going on right here. Forgive me, Ving Rames. I just I was watching this gentleman last night. Yeah, Ving Rames. Is, is oh, my God. Of, of yeah, it's one of the, Ving Rames' earlier films. And uh, they get into the house, and the, the horrors ensue about the people under the stairs and what goes on. And this house is full of trap doors and so on and so forth. It's rad. If you like any kind of horror, check it out. But uh, it's a movie that brings me home. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something new to kind of freshen this up real quick to put some people on the spot. So I'm going and forgive me here, Natasha. Even if there's yeah. not a graphic, is there another movie in your memory or distant memory that you're kind of feeling in life? Like what what's a comfort film that does it for you besides Bloodsport, which is rad. Okay, Rocky. I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love, 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 love. I mean, it's can like, you a movie that? That like I can watch forever and ever. It's like something that I think is such a beautiful life lessons there. And Agreed. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan. Rocky, I mean, killer. Yeah, I like them all. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to ask for one more, if you don't mind. I'm, I'm reaching here, but is there, in terms okay, of comfort films? I mean, well, because I mean the other movie. It's like now that I'm thinking about, it, it's like I like Gladiator. I love all the fighting movies. Oh, I love it! Right on. That's a great <laughs> picture. Yeah. I mean, that's something that I just like. It's truly like kind of resonates with in, with me, and I love the um, yeah that monologue that he gives um, at the end of uh, before the main character dies. It's beautiful when he reveals who he is. Every time I watch it, like every time I think about it, it brings me tears. And um, actually, every time that I play a um, bad character, like the movie that's coming out, Blood Pageant, like I'm antagonist. And uh, um, the antagonist in this movie, he's just such a great antagonist. He's so freaking crazy. I mean, I think that's um, every time I kind of try to reference that character. And Joaquin Phoenix, I believe. Yeah, Joaquin yeah. Phoenix. He was like, how yeah. crazy he is and how, how, like, and how much he wants love. It's like it's like such a powerful character. So yeah, 
I love Walking Phoenix. And not like to mention Shining. the soundtrack. Oh, the yeah. shine is great, but the soundtrack of Gladiator is fantastic. Oh my gosh, fantastic. So like moving, yeah. but the shine yeah. is awesome. Oh my yeah. gosh, shining too. Yeah, yeah. Have Especially you seen Doctor Sleep? Huh? Have you seen Doctor Sleep? No, no. Okay, so uh, Stephen King came out with Doctor Sleep, which is a sequel novel to The Shining. Okay, many years oh. later, it came out like four or five, six years ago, and they made a movie about it, and it is awesome. I can't I cannot recommend it enough. Again, Doctor Sleep, sequel mm -hmm. to The Shining. It's the oh, young boy yeah. in The Shining, but mm -hmm. as an adult. Oh, I will check it out. That's cool. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, if if you stream it, you have to. I I gotta I gotta tell you, you have to find um, the director's cut. The director's cut of like is like thirty minutes longer, but I've seen both, and it it expands about like so many like character developments in the you know director's cut you, you just look for it i think it's called red rum as a matter of fact uh -huh. so okay. well, check yeah, it out sure. it's yeah. so good it sounds good yeah 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 so apparently we're going on two hours i'm getting notes here from the uh management <laughs> you know <laughs> um, notes shut up <laughs> notes here so it's like it's going off the rails like fuck I your have to pay. <laughs> well then slip outside or get a gatorade cup just kidding uh, uh all right so the next one and then we'll just wrap it up hot shots anybody 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 i love anybody? this movie i watched this in amazing seventh grade amazing constantly. amazing amazing it's a parody what? of top gun and top gun maverick is coming out like oh. within minutes the sequel to top gun Okay, with Tom Cruise. So this movie basically takes the piss out of Top Gun, and it's rad. And I just remember, like as a kid, like my friend and I would like hide our bikes uh, under the stairwell of the mall, and we wouldn't even lock it up; we just hide it, and then like roll in and check this out. We probably saw it, like five or six times in the theater. It's so fun. You know what I mean? I love Charlie body. Sheen in this movie. That's great. It's great. So, so good. He was so great when he got caught up on drugs. You know, so in, great. in my stand-up act, I used to do a joke about the expression taking the piss. And mm -hmm. the punchline was, it sounds like a blowjob gone horribly wrong. <laughs> oh. I could see how that would go wrong. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, just to close it out, I was initially going to close it out with Halloween, but just to put a pin in it, uh, for me, uh, the next uh, three, and we can cycle through these in five seconds, are Boogie Nights, Magnolia, and Punch Drunk Love. These are all Paul Thomas Anderson films. Very good films, uh, all shot in the San Fernando Valley where I grew up. So it's almost a travel log uh, within the city of San Fernando Valley. Totally right. highly recommend them all again. Boogie Nights, Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love. And I, not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot, Kaylor, you got a backup? Another film that you like throw on in the background that you're feeling? It's Swap me out if you can. Cool. It's Roman Holiday. Oh, cool, cool. Nice. nice. Is that like 40s? Yeah. Right on. I think I own it, as a matter of fact. I don't think I've seen it in years. Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Very nice. Roman Holiday. You don't find a young a person this young that, that watches those movies. It's incredible. Well, that's uh that should be a standard. Uh, it's funny because I think I mentioned this before just to kind of, kind of close it out. I felt like movies and music didn't start until I recognized that they started. And that was when I was like five or four. Okay, so for years it took me, you know, uh, a hot minute to actually start looking back of things that that happened before I was born. Holy, there's a world out there. So, yeah. with that said, that's the segment. I don't want to hijack you any further. Movies that take you home. Thank you, Kevin, for the suggestion. And Susanna, that's all I got. Nice now job. You, awesome. I, awesome. I, enjoy, I enjoyed everybody's contribution. I created a poll earlier on whether Die Hard was a Christmas movie. Did you? And whether it's not, yes. And 75% say, yes, it is a Christmas movie. Yes. 25% say no, but really it's only three to one. It's, yeah. a, it's a Christmas yes. film. I win. So. So yeah. <laughs> Do you I, think uh, it's not? I think it's not. It's not. Bruce Willis even said it's not. Well, you know what? What that guy says, he's kind of a dickhole. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't give a fuck. It's what the fan... The, the consumers that are paying money for it, he got very highly paid for that. Sorry, it's a Christmas film. He should just be like, cool, residuals, great. Right. Especially right. During Christmas, he gets checks because we're VODing it. Sorry, Christmas film. 
Oh I'm man, done. he just texted me. He won't be on the show next month now. Thanks Great. a lot. No problem. No loss. <laughs> Maybe we can get Paul Rudd. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. Love you. You're great. Susanna, you're amazing. Kevin, uh, Kaylor, and Natasha, I love you all. This has been a great show. Guys, uh, we we played the ticker on the bottom. That's how you support us. Anchor.fm slash the Danny McDermott Show slash support. I I, I think I cut out, but maybe not. Uh, Guys, tell your friends. Let's build this. Let's keep it going. Thank you, lovely ladies, uh, and have a good night. And thank you, Sandy Johnson, for coming on. Yes, yes thank absolutely. You. Yeah, thank you. Right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night. Woo! Nope. Uh. <laughs>